Welcome back to All The Mods 9. The last episode we did a ton of grinding. I played a ton. I played around like four hours to get the resources for this as well as to move this, make this platform, everything like that. I just want to say thank you so much for any feedback that I've gotten so far. You guys have been awesome. There's been quite a few comments already um, and I really do appreciate that. And I'd like to give a really big thank you to Tone2812 for all of your awesome feedback and for watching all the videos. I really appreciate it. I understand that the last couple of videos that I've done in this series might have seemed a bit more rushed and I totally understand and I totally agree with that. I have been trying to adjust my style as we go along you know I want things to be interesting but I do absolutely agree that I have been a little bit less informative lately I would really like to fix that because I really love explaining things and also I understand that it helps you guys understand what I'm doing as well so the beautiful ore factory here now the ore factory all centers around this thermal evaporation factory here so in the quest book it will tell you everything that you need to build for this specific setup this is where it starts the thermal evaporation plant it'll give you a gist on how you need to build it what the base values are for this thing i think giving you guys a bit more context and explaining it in the way that i understand might help you out so let's go ahead and do that so essentially the thermal evaporation plant here only needs to be the four blocks by four blocks by three blocks to start out but you can raise it even higher to not only store more water but also allows it to produce i believe it produces faster um, regardless you can build this higher if you need to but currently we don't really need to it is producing just enough with the amount of machines we have here and as you can see we already have some brine backed up here just for reserve now one of the most important blocks for this, if you don't want to mess with having a water source here and having a way to drain that water source, is the kitchen sink. This is an infinite water source. I mean, I've used it all over the place. I've used it over there. I've used it here. It is an amazing block to have. Then you pipe water into one of these thermal evaporation valves because this machine needs water. As you can see, it needs water to convert that water into brine. And the way that this machine converts water into brine is with heat and with power. When I say power, what I mean is the power is getting converted into heat for the machine to work. But that is exactly what this beautiful resistive heater does. And with the resistive heater, you can actually configure this to use as much power as you want to get the temperature as high as you need to. Now this pipe here, the thermodynamic conductor, depending on the tier of pipe that you have, it actually will lose some heat that is generated from here and it won't carry all of it. I don't know the exact stats, but if you look up the thermal dynamic conductor, you can see that it has conduction, insulation, and heat capacity. And as you go through the tiers, you see that the insulation goes up and up and up. So the insulation stops this from allowing heat to dissipate. Just think of it as some insulation that you might have in your basement or your attic to keep things a bit warmer maybe for the winter or to keep things cooler in your house so the air conditioning doesn't get out or so the heat doesn't get out in the winter. That's what you can think of this pipe as. We need a way to pipe out the brine from this machine. So we have the thermal evaporation valve here and we went ahead and made some elite mechanical pipes to pump brine out. Now you can just pump brine straight into this machine here and it'll work just fine. But for me personally, I like to have backup sources just in case things go crazy. So this pipe itself is holding 32 buckets. This is holding 64 buckets worth and this one again 32 buckets. After you have your thermal evaporation plant done and you have it producing brine, then you're going to need the electrolytic separator here. This electrolytic separator, what it does is it takes a liquid and it turns it into their gas components. In this case, it is sodium and it is chlorine. With this electrolytic separator, there are two options that you get here, or three rather. You get dumping, idle, and dumping excess. So the way that these work is if you don't need a chemical, like we don't need sodium here right now, we set the machine to dump its excess. So we only want to stop producing when the chlorine here is full, or even if this has like none left, but the sodium is full, it will continue to dump out the sodium so we can continue to produce chlorine, regardless of how much sodium we have. Then we are going to pipe that chlorine into the chemical infuser. 
And what this chemical infuser does is it takes chlorine. Ah, you see, I did mess up here because as you can see, this is storing hydrogen chloride. And what actually happened is in this config here, I set it up earlier to output out of the front and that really messed up the cable. So let's go ahead and rebuild this. There we go, now things are cooking with gas. Okay, so back to it. The chemical infuser takes chlorine and it takes hydrogen and then it produces hydrogen chloride. Now, in order to get that hydrogen that we needed, we needed to place an electrolytic separator in this chain. But I didn't want to deal with only being allowed to have one or having some funky cable setups here. So what I did was I just placed it in front and I ran the power under and on top of this. The electrolytic separator then takes water, which it is getting from this sink. Then it converts that water into its base components of hydrogen and oxygen. After this produces its hydrogen chloride, the hydrogen chloride is then piped here into the chemical injection chamber. The chemical injection chamber takes raw ore, then it cooks that raw ore into ore shards, then it passes those shards into the purification chamber, which as you can see has a fuel bar here which needs oxygen. We are taking that oxygen from the electrolytic separator here. So we pipe that oxygen into the purification chamber and then the purification chamber takes the shards that the chemical injection chamber produces and converts them into clumps. Now for this electrolytic separator that is giving hydrogen to this chemical infuser and giving oxygen to this purification chamber, you're going to want to come in here and make sure that both of these are set to dumping excess Yes, this will make the machine run con constantly, but if you are already at the point in this game, it's only using 160 FE per tick, so it's not that expensive. The way that you could avoid having to run dump excess on both of these is to make another electrolytic separator, put it on top of here, power it, pipe this water up, put it into the electrolytic separator, and then separate the hydrogen going into there and the oxygen going into here from the machine up top. Then you can set your important chemical for each to idle when it's full and then dumping excess to the other one that's not being used. Now here's where things get a little bit less complex. We're not messing with chemicals anymore. You're just going back to your base system. And that all starts with the crusher here. The crusher takes the clumps that are produced in the purification chamber, then crushes the clumps. Then those clumps are turned into dirty dust. The dirty dust is then enriched in the enrichment chamber and turns into regular ore dust. Then we come over to the smelter and the smelter will smelt up that regular dust as you expect it to. And we have it set to output into this barrel for now. I hope my explanation was okay. I hope you understood what I was getting at. I will do better in the future to make sure I'm explaining what I'm doing rather than just rushing through things. As much fun as it is to just get you guys the important bits and the fast paced stuff and to keep things interesting, I also want to be informative. That's what I love the most about this game is how much information is here and how much you can learn with all of these mods in this mod pack. Okay, now let's talk about the solution for moving the ore that we were talking about before the last episode ended. So you'll see here that I put this barrel down here and what I'm going to use this barrel for actually is to hold the ore that we're going to be transferring from our network. And we're going to be transferring that from our refined storage storage network into this barrel here. The way that we'll be able to do that is we're going to make things called a network receiver and a network transmitter. For that, we're going to need a network card to make that work. But before we can even do that, we're going to need some ender pearls and some more netherite. And also, if you can see, there's also processors here and cores, which means we need slime. So there's quite a lot we need to do today to get through all of this, but I'm really excited to do it. Let's get to it. Now, to solve the importing issue of doing only three at a time, there's an awesome mod that I messed with just a little bit, and that is the mod Laser IO. You can make these laser nodes here. As you can see, I already have two. The laser nodes allow you to send items from another laser node, not not super far away, but uh, I think it's around 16 blocks, but that's okay because we don't need it to send it far. What we want to do though, is you can set it up to tell it how many items you want to send every tick. And you can also set a filter onto the other laser node that is connected to it to tell it 
to stop transferring when it sees three blocks in the chest. I'll go back over it in uh, much better detail when we actually get to that part in the series. As you can see, I left some notes here for myself before I got off on the last session. I thought it would be a really good idea to get some amethyst so we can make an ender gate. And what that ender gate will allow us to do is to set up a portal that spawns wave of waves of enemies. And with an ender gate, it spawns waves of endermen. And at the end, you get 100 loot rolls from endermen when you finish the portal. So it's really cool. It's really awesome. It's an awesome way to force yourself to fight mobs, um, but you also get rewarded if you complete it. Now, the other thing, uh, which is something we just talked about, was get the laser nodes to transfer ore to the factory and also to make my network receiver and my transmitter. So we'll go ahead and break these signs down because we know what we need to do. I know that we've already said that we wanted to get this stuff done here. So we did some mining. We made our ore processor. Now we want to upgrade our backpack. I have one netherite ingot and we can also make another one. This sweet little backpack here and this sweet netherite ingot and upgrade our backpack. But wait, we can't. Why can't we upgrade our backpack? That is because in the 1.20 Minecraft, they added these smithing templates and you even need one to upgrade your backpack to netherite, which is awesome. I think these do add a bit more grind to all the mods, which if we're being honest, all the mods six through eight were super easy to get to end game gear and you were super OP early. Now I'm not saying that we're not really strong in all the mods nine, but this is just another step of grind for us to get to the best pieces of gear and equipment in the game. So I'm all here for it. Now the way you get these smithing templates is you have to find them in the nether. You have to find them in bastions. So you have to look around and you have to use this thing called a brush. Now the brush allows you to find specific blocks and when you find those specific blocks, they will be called suspicious. You'll find things like sand and gravel that look a little different and that is what you need to be sifting with the brush to get those templates out of there. After you find one template, all you have to do is craft it with diamonds and then you get an extra template and then you can just continue to repeat that over and over and over. Oh, as you can see, Silent Gear is gonna go and they're trying to make some kind of upgrade with Silent Gear. Ooh, future content, question mark. So with all of that information out of the way, what we need to ask ourselves is what does that mean for us? What is the next plan? What, are, what is the next thing that we wanna do? What are we gonna go try and tackle now? So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is actually cook up this bread because we are running out of food and I would like to have some food ready. And after we get this food ready, what I want to do right now is to bring your attention over to this beautiful little purple orb that is following our grave right here. If you'll remember, we got this amazing thing called the Vengeance Pickaxe. It has an awesome enchantment on it, Fortune 5, but it also has the Curse of Vengeance 3. Now. That's something that we don't really want on this pickaxe. So what we're actually going to do is since our grave over there has a spirit circling it, we can use something called Book of Disenchantment. We can use this Book of Disenchantment here if we place it in our offhand and then we take the pickaxe in our right hand, we right click on the grave We just pulled the enchantments off of the Vengeance Pickaxe. Now we have Fortune 5 and Curse of Vengeance 3 in separate books. So now what that means for us is we can put Fortune 5 on our pickaxe here. How awesome is that? We have Fortune 5 on our pickaxe. We don't have to worry about the curse. We don't have to worry about any of that. Now we have a Fortune 5 Obsidian Pick. And also, I want to attempt to upgrade this pickaxe as we go mining later and get more resources. Already, we have over three stacks of bread. That is, or toast. Now that I've recharged our jetpack, I think we're going to go mining in the overworld for a little bit. So we can get some more resources. 
Now, after we mine some resources in the overworld, I do want to look for some amethyst and also see if we can find some endermen to get these ender pearls because we really, really do need endermen, uh, this gate pearl for the endermen. Or what we could do is instead try to locate the stronghold um, and then go to the end and fight some endermen. But we're not ready to fight the ender dragon yet. I mean, we could. We could definitely do it and we'd probably be able to pull it off. But I don't really want to do that right now. I feel like that would be me kind of rushing things. So I want to take it a bit more slow. What I will do before we go, though, is I've gone ahead and split the ore here down into multiples of three. So when we drop everything into here, we can set our chemical injection chamber to take input from the bottom and it'll start working on all of the ore that we have in here and our smelter will go ahead and smelt them up while we are gone. We still don't have a waystone to get down here, but that is okay. This place is huge. Actually, let's let's fly through here, see if we can find some amethyst. Oh, we found a backpack, boy. Let's see if we can find a uh, hole for amethyst to be in. Good lord, look how much ore is down here. Oh yeah, that's right. This goes all the way down to our uh, bottom of our cave. Yeah, let's uh let's look. Let's look around, shall we? No mimic. Oh, there's a skeleton though, and he's got our number. <laughs> him falling gave him a concussion. He stopped even trying to kill us. Oh, a golden apple. Okay, some food. It's always good to get different foods. Some blue pants. Okay. Cracked gem. Another cracked gem and some sugar cane. Well, the new food is always nice. And let's compare our pants here. We have projectile protection five, which is huge. So I think we're gonna keep that now. This does have two sockets on it though, so we'll take another look at that later. But let's keep looking. Let This is our first time using fortune five on three blocks. Let's see how much we get. We got four diamonds, so very unlucky, even with fortune five. Let's see on this one. That was four blocks, and we got nine. Oh yeah, that was that was nice. Okay, that was good. Two blocks, five out of that one. Man, this fortune five is already so nice to use. Now we just need efficiency on this bad boy. We will be good to go. What is this? Runic deep slate. What does this give us? A rune. Okay. Neat. <laughs> I don't know what that's used for. We eat our rabbit stew. Ooh, a cave creeper. Damn, I wish we had a mob swap. These guys are really good for mob farming. Because they drop ore when they die. They have a chance to anyway. It's on their drop table. So we're going to have to think about that uh, going forward. I want to take a couple mob swaps with us. Hey, you. Stop that. What is all of this? Kyanite. 64 blocks of kyanite. I don't know what this is used for, but it was 64 blocks, and this is also 64 blocks. Ouch. Ouch. The whole squad laughing. They set me up, man. Shit. Well, we've actually found quite a bit of ore just flying around our cave rather than just going to do some strip mining, so this is nice. Nice little uh, change of pace here. Get some silver, some gold more osmium and here's uraninite which we are going to need a ton of later because we're going to be messing with power i want to see what this kyanite turns into kyanite dust which has chance to give aluminum and silicon okay well i'm not worried about that right now because that just looks like more greg tech stuff so i'm going to ignore that i don't want to mess with greg tech thank you look at all this stuff we got slime we got another shield, a name tag, some heads, samurai, nature's mend, enchanting table. Goodbye, sir. What you got for me? Gold, diamonds, emerald, golden apple. Oh, get blocked, bitch. Hey, hey, yo, chill. There's another spawner over there. Yep. Yeah. Damn you. Yeah, swim, idiot. Ha! Longevity, quick charge, fire aspect, and some more interesting loots. Hey! Damn, bro. These mobs are cracked. What is this? 
Oh, it's just regular redstone. I haven't seen any in stone form in so, such a long time. <gasps> no, Axolotl, don't be dumb. No, don't be dumb. Don't kill yourself. That Axolotl was trying to commit Sudoku. Oh, I thought I saw Amethyst. Ooh, I didn't even mean to block that. Yes, I did. I'm him. I really didn't. <laughs> lush caves, huh? What's so lush about it? You talking about all these flowers and stuff? Why you ain't got amethyst over here then? Where your amethyst at? It's your dog ass. Shut up, pillager. You stink. We got quite a bit of stuff and things from our trip so far. What is this? A broke ass house. A book, paper, clay, iron, moss carpet with some glowberries. Okay, well this is an interesting little abode. Just breaks right out into water here. Man, cave, the caves update was nuts to add all of this stuff, wasn't it? Hey you, chill out. We are close to running out of fuel here. This is a ton of clay. Hey! That was not nice. Leave me alone, I'm just trying to yoink all this clay. We'll probably need it at some point. Damn, that is a ton of clay. What is happening? Oh, it's the mimic chest. That was what was happening. He dropped us something. The snorkel. Do we have something on our head yet? We do not. What does this allow the wearer to breathe underwater? Yeah. Looks so damn weird. But now we can breathe underwater. So that's cool. Thank you, Mr. Mimic, sir. Thank you for your service. Now we can go all the way down here. Oh, uh, homie's committing Sudoku up there. Rip. Rip the homies. Gosh, we have so much stuff already. Damn. Well, I think this is a good slash home. We didn't find any amethyst, sadly, but you know what's awesome is you see this full backpack? Bam! Still got some stuff in it, but ain't that so nice. Bam! Look at that. And then we can just toss all this in here and bam look at that how beautiful is that it's so good let's search up our raw ore okay we have enough for that we have two stacks of that and for two stacks we need one more so it's even with iron we need to put two back so we can have the even 60 put one back of raw silver 15 the raw zinc is an even three 495 osmium damn and i think we have more too because we have the blocks of osmium yeah and one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's uh, toss this over here. Look at all this beautiful, and how, how are we looking over here? How, how have we done so far? Given how slow everything else is, like these are all super duper slow, so that's not a bad turnout. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and take, so what do we need for this? We need osmium dust, and I think for the other one we need gold dust. Okay, so let's take half a stack of osmium and half a stack of gold. I already have cooked osmium and gold. What are you doing, Slick? Come on. We can leave that in there to cook, and we'll just crush down the gold bars. Let's do 20, and we'll get our ore hammer, and we'll just crush these bad boys down. Oops. I crushed a lot. Well, you know what sucks is we're out of infused alloy. Let's start enriching that, and we will... How much iron do we have over here? Please tell me we have a lot. 500. That is good. That is good, that is good. We're gonna go over here and we're just gonna chuck all of these in here to wait. This is auto outputting here, that's good. We'll toss the speed upgrades in here. Yes, it makes it less power efficient because we have speed upgrades and no energy upgrades, but that's okay. We want it to cook up so we can make any, we can make even more upgrades to make it run even faster. Okay, boom, 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 boom. We'll drop three into here because this thing needs to speed up to match this one because this is running three at a time. Okay, we got some more. And now we're just going to repeat this process. All right, keep going, baby. Yeah. And we need sand. We have a ton of black sand, so let's use that. What we can actually do is make an augment generator here. Oh, no, that's actually not what we want to do. Scratch that. Here we go. Augment factory converts the furnace into a factory. So this allows it to use power for heat instead of fuel. So now we can yoinky spoinky this. See if we can upgrade it, which we can. See if we can upgrade it again. 
which we cannot because we don't have blaze rods, but that's okay. We have an emerald furnace. We can just place this here. We can go ahead and slot the augment in. Now it's a factory and now we can just toss the sand in here and we can have it take input and output and we'll have it output on the left side here. Now this is uh, cooking up and it's using power instead of carbon fuel. This is all done. Look at that beautiful. Let's make some more. We're always going to need a ton of those. So let's just, let's just make them all just more speed upgrades, which we need the glass for. And we're waiting on the glass right now. Let's make some energy upgrades. We made 30 energy upgrades and 14 speed. We need more glass. It's a good thing we have that smelter there. Let's go over here and upgrade our system. How many machines do we have to upgrade? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight over there. So let's, well, it looks like our jetpack's running out of fuel as well. So many things and stuff to do, but that is A-OK -okay with me. Oh, we need to make another hammer. Copper, we have enough copper. And you see what's so nice about this? I don't even have to make these. They're already here. Oop, put those back in. Look at that, beautiful. You see this? We take the blocks out. Oh, we only have three copper and we only have 18 nuggets. Put the blocks in, boom, look at all that. Oh, so beautiful. I could cry. So let's upgrade each of these machines. Let's split this. Okay, let's do this. Speed, energy. 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 And speed, energy. Oh, and look at this one. This one was already chilling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and take this out because it doesn't need them all, right? And then we can upgrade these three machines one more time each because they're all behind the first machine in the loop. So this will help them catch up. Not by much, but it'll be useful because yeah, this machine is faster than all of these ones can uh, deal with it because this is taking three and outputting eight. This is only doing one at a time. So it's a bit slower than the rest. Our process should go much faster now. As you can see, this is still keeping up very nicely and it also has more slots. So we're, we are chilling there. All right, perfect. There's a small little quality of life upgrade that we did to our ore processing factory. Let's get some more glass in here just so we can have it uh, cooked up so we can move it to our system when we're done. Let's go ahead and, oh, not that. Nope, nope, give me that. Let's go ahead and do this. Boop. Okay, we're all good here. Toss some more bread in there. Hello, trader. What do you have? Nothing that I want. Oh, got to get the thinking stretch going. Okay, let's think about what we want to do. We were looking for amethyst, and then we wanted to get some ender endermen. Think, brain, think. What do we want to do? What I'm thinking we want to do is see if these endermen that spawn over here are actually here still. No, they are not. Okay, I wonder if those endermen will spawn at night over here. The peaceful ones, the mushroom head ones. If they do, we might be able to mob swab those um, because they do drop ender pearls. We might want to already make a mob farm. God, that snorkel looks so goofy. Yeah, we might want to do that. And I think I'll put the mob farm over here so it's away from the house there are tons and tons of ways you can make a mob farm um i think i'm gonna go with mob grinding utils is way at least to start out and we're gonna use the mob mashers and the mob fans later on we might move to a different system uh, but for now this system would i think is going to work the best for me so we're gonna need a mob masher beautiful absolutely gorgeous would you look at that now, there's an item that we're going to need, and it's called a cardboard box. So the cardboard box actually allows you to pick up spawners. So it's really beautiful. I'm trying to think of the best wood dust we want to go for here. It's probably just with the precision sawmill. I believe I have a steel casing in here. I do. And we're going to go ahead and just upgrade this to a basic sawmill factory. And we're going to place this right here, and we're going to tell it to output there. Okay, it's already doing that. All right. Okay, so sawmill factory. Auto sort. And we will toss these stacks in here and hope that we get some sawdust. And holy crap, that thing is loud. Oh my gosh. Here's a tip. When you're playing this mod pack, you can mute sounds. If you click on this muffler here, and it will show you recent sounds that you've heard. You see this tile.machine.precision sawmill? You can just muffle that sound. And now I don't hear that sound anymore. Okay, we have four sawdust, so let's go ahead and make our cardboard box. Bam! Cardboard box achieved. Now all we need to do is go find a spawner and we can pick it up. You know where a ton of spawners are? Down in our cave. This is a pillager one, so I will cardboard box that up. 
All right, so now that we have it cardboard boxed up, we can mine it with our pickaxe. Let's just take all of this loot, kill this husk, and let us go back up top. Do we have enough resources to upgrade my jetpack? Um, we can make a steel one instead of a gold one. We have 78 steel. I think that's enough. What do these need? These need advanced coils, which need gold, which I need gold for. <laughs> We don't have enough gold to do that, so I might move the ore around down here so it focuses on gold, at least for one stack. Okay, so we're just waiting on this, and not enough energy. We don't have enough energy output. Ah, it's probably these. These here. These, uh, so these chemical machines here, they actually, their speed multiplier is much different and they use a ton of power when they kick off. So I think that's actually what's messing with our power situation at the moment. Yeah, this oxygen, the machine can't keep up with its power usage. Are you okay now? No, you're still not, not enough energy to run. Oh goodness. Do we just need to reduce these speeds down? Yeah, that's fine. I'll do that. Yeah, this is getting capped by oxygen. This one is. So let's make some more energy upgrades for these guys. <laughs> that is so much lead, goodness. Well, there's a lesson in the ore processing factory. It is mad expensive for power. This must have got nerfed again. It's only max output is 3.7. So we might need to make another line of machines here. Yep, let's make another gas, let's make another pressurized reactant chamber and another gas burning generator. All right, now this is pumping out ethylene as well. Hey, you, stop that. And this is gathering ethylene. Perfect, so these both are gonna be filling up. We need to make more speed and energy upgrades for these, uh, for these um, pressurized reaction chambers. Unfortunately, these can't take any upgrades besides the muffling upgrade. You see, this one's producing 7.42 per tick, and this one's only producing 1.5. Oh, it's because its burn rate is super high. This one's burn rate is mega low. I wonder why that is. Well, this is heavily burning through our ethylene. How's this over here? Are you kicking off now? You good? You got power? All right. Our system is kicking off now still low on oxygen yeah we can make the gas upgrade which makes it more efficient in using gas so we might want to do that just gas upgrade so they'll be more efficient with the gas that they're being that they are using now hopefully this can keep up now looks like it can beautiful all right sweet so these can this can keep up now because this is being way more efficient so currently our upgrade system our upgrades that we have in the system right now are for the gas producing uh, machines like the electrolytic separator and the chemical infuser, we have three in speed and we have eight in energy for all of these. Then for our regular machines right now, we are sitting at six for the chemical injection chamber, six for energy, and then max gas upgrade. So the efficiency of gas using machinery. Then for the rest of these machines, aside from the energized smelter, we have seven in speed, seven in energy, and this one's maxed out in gas. The rest of these don't use gas, so you can't put that one in there. Things are cooking along nicely. We're finally getting our gold, which is super sweet. We're going to slowly run out of power here as well, so we need to get more upgrades here. But we needed gold to get those upgrades, so it was good that we got this machine going. We can start making more speed upgrades. And that's just how this crap works, man. I was gonna go do something else, but then I noticed a problem with this machine, and I can't I can't just leave it. I can't just leave problems over here, you know? That's just not who I is. Oh, look, we have a ton of planks in here from our sawing factory. Let's make the rest of these. Let's go put these on our machines. Let's max this bad boy out. Okay, those are maxed out now. So they'll be outputting a ton of ethylene now. Just gonna be nice. Crusher, let's just toss what we can in here. So he is just grinding away. We can also upgrade this to a factory if we wanted to. 
And this is why we built this watermelon factory so open is because we wanted to be able to do upgrades like that. So in the future, it would be easier to add on to things. Because I mean, if we need to, we can add even two more rows of this and we can continue to add on to these ones as well if we need to. This is using more biofuel than we're actually producing, unfortunately. So we might need to upgrade our crusher here. Now you can just place another singular crusher on that line if you want to, but I want to upgrade it to the crushing factory because I like it that way. We sort it, make sure that we change. Whenever you, whenever you rebuild an item, the config resets to default. So you need to make sure that you reset this. And uh, now we need the wrench because we need to tell this to start outputting again. Yeah, while we were gone, it used all of that. That is insane. Just toss that in there. And there we go. Now it's outputting like a charm. Hopefully this keeps up. I really hope it does. It doesn't look like it's going to, surprisingly. These things are cooking up this biofuel like crazy. We're at a predicament where actually our machines here, our machines over here are using more biofuel than I can produce. It looks like our crusher maxed out can just keep over what how much we're using, but our melons are gonna get drained super fast, so we're gonna need to make more hopper botany pots or upgrade the soil, but I think I'll just make more pots. It's a good thing I collected all of that clay while I was down there. I love this part of Minecraft though, where things just start to get absolutely crazy <laughs> because you just need more and more and more. I love this part. This part of mod in Minecraft is insane because like I mentioned before, I want things to be efficient. So I am I am totally cool with this. This is this is the fun stuff for me. So I promise there is a method to my madness. <laughs> now we want to cut this pipe off because we don't want the melons to be going straight from these popper botany pots into the system. We want them to go here. Now I really hope that these eight hopper botany pots can keep up with this system. I don't know if it will because it looks like these things are getting used like crazy fast, but this will at least slow down the rate that we're going to run out. We still have 17,000 slices, but we had 17.7 thousand slices only like two minutes ago. So this thing is getting drained. At least our ethylene is keeping up with the power drain. But that's what happens when you start to upgrade this system to be faster. It just starts draining power at insane rates. This is using almost a thousand per tick. This is using 600. This one's using 150. This one's using 150. And this one's using anywhere from 63 upwards of 300, depending on how many slots are full. This machine is constantly using 1.3K per tick. This machine is using around 400 at full use. And this one, we're also waiting, but I think it's also around 400 FE per tick. And these aren't even fully upgraded yet because we can't even utilize them properly. We don't have enough power to use these things at full blast. <laughs> now we do have enough gold now to make these advanced coils so we can upgrade our jetpack. So let's do that. You need 11 advanced coils to do what we're about to do. You need five energy cells gonna need two thrusters and you'll need one steel capacitor so before all of that we were working on a mob farm <laughs> but while we wait on the platinum jetpack so we can go explore to get ready for the mob farm let's go ahead and start getting into the basics of mystical agriculture here because we need inferium and we have none now as i mentioned in the first episode i'm not going to use this for everything like there's seeds for almost every kind of ore in the game. We're going to, like I mentioned, try to avoid that, but we will use it for some of the necessities like Inferium seeds. Okay, so we have, we have Inferium seeds. Let's get some clay cooked up because we're gonna need some more terracotta so we can make some hopper botany pots. We're gonna want some one by two drawers so we can store the seeds and the essence as it comes out of the hopper botany pots. Okay, we already have three tertium, so let's make this into some tertium farmland. Boom, we have inferium cooking up. These will all output inferium for us, so then we can start stockpiling that. Later on, we can get into making a much better, much quicker, and much nicer farm. What was that that I just got? It was garlic, ooh, I like garlic. I just put away my shovel, damn it. Get back out here, boy. Let's go take a gander at the ore factory, see if we have any platinum. That we do. That should be enough, actually, to get our jetpack done. The platinum jetpack actually has better stats than the diamond jetpack anyway, so I am totally fine using 
platinum over diamond because diamond is needed in much different recipes. You need five of these. Again, two thrusters and one capacitor. And then you drop your jetpack in. Boom, platinum jetpack. Look at that, insane. 36 million FE it can hold. It uses more, but it stores way more. It's faster. The hover speed is way better. It's just overall a massive upgrade for us. Let's get this bad boy charging and look how slow it's going to be. Look at that. 1 million out of 36 million charged. <laughs> this is eating up our ethylene over there right now. I just know it. <laughs> it is tearing at our ethylene. Actually, let's see. I want to see how much it's using. Uh, gotta, I got to use my legs. I'm not used to walking no more. <laughs> is it maxing it out? Surprisingly not. Oh, this one's almost maxed out. Oh, because it can't even max it out. It can't. The, uh... Advanced power cube we have can't max out our machines. It can't output enough to max them out. Yeah, that's crazy though, still. We're not even a fourth of the way full. <laughs> okay, we're gonna stop it here. We don't need it to be full. We just need enough power um, so we can go walk around and find some Enderman once that sun sets. And since the sun hasn't set just yet, we will go ahead and start working on our little mob farm area that we're going to want to build at. Again, we want to use chunk borders because chunk borders are nice. So let's do that. Y70 seems like a good spot. So let's do this. Let's kill this blue boy. These guys take no damage. There we go. Jesus, he didn't take damage for a while. Oh, we got a blue bow. An infinity bow, too. Ooh. Okay. It gets plus 22% arrow damage, 60% draw speed, 25% speed, so I move faster. Infinity bow. It inflicts slowness, and I gain speed, and it takes less durability. Well, that's a nice little treat that I just got there. We cleared out a little zone over there. We're going to build a, I guess we build a little platform over here for our mob farm. my building wand okay so little platform nice all right now how big do we want to make this and one two three there all right i think that's big enough we need to collect some sand because we're going to need a ton of glass so let's find somewhere to collect a lot of sand oh this is a little lighthouse oh no it's that mage tower episode one moment Check for the TNT, thank you. Some stuff and things. While we're here, we might as well grab some cactus. We're gonna need green dye at some point. Let's actually get a barrel going again over here. Let me take just one of these. I'll take this barrel here. And we'll just deposit all of that in there. How's our storage? We are full. Our storage is completely full. Well, that is not good. <laughs> that is not good. Well, since our storage was full, I went ahead and I did this here. So we're going to add this to our storage network. Uh, now this is part of our external storage, so I can access these items within here, but not take up my space because I was completely out of space. I think I'm going to go ahead and move uh, these items into here as well. And actually for the deep slate, I'm gonna use a compacting drawer because I have a ton of compressed deep slate. Goodness, we have a ton of netherrack too, geez. We'll put netherrack in here as well. Put that in there and link and link. There we go. Those are now part of the system. Now we can put a upgrade on this. Holy cow, that was a ton of stuff. Drop that in there, and we will link this. There we go. All right, perfect. So this is all linked up to the system now. Beautiful. Absolutely. That's f***ing minging. Oh, wow. Look at all this ore we still have here. We still have this much redstone? Damn. Let's cook that bad boy up. Let's do that. Let's do it. Yeah. Cook it up. Cook it up. We're almost at the max for that, so I'll just upgrade this storage box. Okay, well, we need more glass, so... And let me take this barrel, like I was gonna do in the first place, and hook this up to here. Wrench. One, two, three, four. Do a stack upgrade in here. And... Upgrade. We will take this. 
and upgrade it into this. So this thing is just pumping after it's done cooking this, of course. We want to take a look at the tinted glass here. It needs coal. Do we have enough to make some stacks? Okay, so we still have enough coal. We just need more glass. How much coal do we actually have? Not much, surprisingly. Oil sands. What does this turn into? Oil sands. Oh, so this wasn't coal. I thought this was coal. Um, it looks the same almost. I don't know what that is, but it's not coal, and I thought it was coal. Where did we find all of that coal before? It wasn't over here, was it? I think it was further away from the base. Oh, look, it's from our humble beginnings. <laughs> Welcome back to episode one. Just want more coal. That's what I'm looking for right now is just a bunch of coal. We already got 200, but I'd like more. That's how you know you're playing in modded Minecraft. You're like, oh yeah, I have 200 coal, but that's not enough. This is absolutely how you know you're playing modded Minecraft. Is this coal here? Yeah. How much was that? 102. Nice. Is there more in there? There is. Ouch. Again, ouch. Coal. More. More. That's going to be a lot of coal. Yep, there we go. And there we go. All right, that's enough coal for now. Let's go back home and shove all of this into the system here. And they cook up to they cook up to two coal each. So, yeah, we are absolutely goaded with the sauce right now. We're going to need another compacting drawer here. Let's just make 64 chests because why not? Need some compacting drawers. Do this and we will grab the cobble. Put that in there. So now, since we have one stack of cobble in there, if we just link it to the system, when we output or when we drop all this stuff back into our system, it should automatically go to that. All right, go. Once it gets to the cobble. Yeah, beautiful. Look at that, man. Damn, I love it when shit works. Now we can make more tinted glass. Boop, boop. This is also witherproof, if I am remembering correctly. Now we get some tinted glass. Hey, you. You're our first mob farm victim. Nice to meet you. Damn, look at all that coal go. And look at our jetpack slowly fill up. Oh, I could have just done that from the get? Damn. Oh, look at that. Juicy, juicy. I also think this blocks out light, which is really nice. Last time when I built one of these, I made some like runways up top with mob farm or with mob spawners to come down. I'm actually just gonna break this down. I'll just make it all tinted just so it matches. Okay, I might need to move that inside. It should be able to hit them from there, but I'll probably just, probably just move it inside and also move the backpack out here. Now I wonder, can that take a lever through the wall? I place this yes it can beautiful okay so the main mod that we're going to be using with our spawner is the apotheosis mod so if you type apotheosis spawner you grab the spawner here and you left click on it you can then check the modifications that you can make to the spawner now what we want to do automatically is to make this have redstone control so we need to add a redstone comparator onto it so then we can activate it with a lever instead of it working 24 seven. Okay, so now this should work. Which is gonna be pretty cool, nice. All right, it does work. Ouch, you bitch. All right, now we want some vector plates. Ooh, looks like we need slime. But we also are going to need XP. And to get that XP, we're gonna need probably an absorption hopper because we want the XP to be from mob grinding utils. So this will be us needing to once again do something else. But that is literally the modded Minecraft way. So let's head to the nether so we can grab some blaze rods. 
just collected some ingots from our ore factory over there. You could say that it's doing pretty good. Uh, bloop this into here and now this will fill up with all of those ingots. So it looks like a platinum blade would be the best thing that we can do for a sword right now. Now let's look for what we can do for a tool rod. If I change this out, do I get the blazing tool rod? Okay, I do. And then I can put that on my platinum sword, which will give it only, does it only give it block read? Let's compare this. So a stick, this does eight damage, 1.6 attacks. And if we put this on here, does 8.8 .8 damage, has extra reach, reduces harvest speed as tools damage. We don't care about that. Occasionally takes less damage and malleable four occasionally takes less damage. Okay, so this is a nice, um, nice starting sword for us. So I will, I will take it over the Osmium sword for now. Let's go ahead and put looting and scavenger on here. Do we have sharpness one? Nope. See if we can uh, get an apotheosis thingy going here. We need some gem dust. Gem. We don't have many gems yet. We can take these cracked ones. Take the cracked gems. We need an anvil. We can create. We need to take off our, we need to turn off our magnet real quick and throw these gems into the corner here. Actually, let's only do one or uh, we'll only do two. We'll do that one and that one. Let's crush those, get these. Okay. Now, a path reforge. So we'll do a simple reforge table. Very nice. What does it take for this one? Okay, so we can't do a, a big boy reforging table right now, but that is okay. Place this over here on its lonesome. Now let's go back into apotheosis and we need a salvaging table and we're gonna need a gem cutting table. But right now we just need a salvaging table. What does this take? Okay, we need a smithing table. We need some iron tools. We need some more gem dust and we need a lava bucket. So let's just grab three buckets real quick and go grab that. Boom, boom, boom. We need two more gems crushed by this anvil. Hey, yo, get out of here. You ain't welcome here. You ain't like Jerry, you attacked me. Now that he's gone, let's go ahead and make the salvaging table. So what I'm doing here, there is a huge mod, which is related to all of the boss spawns and everything that we've we found. It's related to the rarity of gear here as well. And with this salvaging table, you can take things that are from the Apotheosis pack and you can salvage them down into the resources that they give. So this time, okay, we got seven gem dust, which is really nice. But now what we need to do is look for anything that is green or any color that we might have. So there's other ways to search for items. So specifically like this with the hashtag here, you can search for data within the item. So you see here, it says the word socket. So anything that says socket within the data of the item, like here it says socketed, anything that has socket, it will pop up here. You can do the same, you can do the same sort of thing here with tags. So right here, this one has the Minecraft colon tools tag. So typing tools here makes this these things show up. I hope that was useful information for you. So what we're gonna do here right now is we're looking for anything that is green or blue and we want to break those down. Uh, we're gonna throw them into the salvager over there so we can get the byproduct from breaking these kinds of things down. Okay, it looks like we found everything that we have in here for now. So let's go ahead and salvage these bad boys. And you'll see that we're gonna get these luminous crystal shards and these time-worn fabrics. Now what we can do with these is we chuck them in here and we chuck our sword in. And for XP and for these as well, you can get your normal platinum sword, these extra affixes and extra stats on top of it. I would really like this one, but we don't have the XP for that. So I'm gonna roll it to this and we're gonna roll it for the lowest level 
and now we can roll it again and hopefully we get something that we want doesn't look like we did but that is okay we will roll it as as green again oh and if you look at that green one actually we get 10 attack damage so we might keep it as green if we don't get anything extra here which we didn't really get much of what we were looking for we got life steal we got block reach and we got crit damage so block reach came from our that actually came from our tool handle um, but as you see the orange stat there the attack damage that was increased by the trait that we got on this weapon in addition to that it also gained 11 percent crit damage but if we put this on it's going to gain 20 percent crit damage and 20 percent life steal and it can reach entities further away it'll do less attack damage but we're going to gain life steal. We're going to gain crit damage. Um, so I think I'm going to take that. But, and it also gains these extra features such as it's going to have, this already has a socket, but this will have a socket as well. And our attacks deal three damage to nearby enemies. So we do splash damage and we're ignoring 4% of durability. That's not a huge number, but you know what? It's something that we can have. So I'll take it. Now we have a pretty decent tool. What we can do now with this tool, um, I'm just gonna go use my anvil here. We can chuck this in and we can place looting on this bad boy. Put scavenger three on this bad boy as well. So now this is a looting monster, at least for the early game. Turn our magnet back on, put the magnet back into our slot there. Let's take our bow out just in case we need it. Let's get some fuel back into our jetpack, and then we will go to the nether and hopefully find some blazes. We are tearing through this power. It is inputting 6.4k FE per tick into our jetpack. That is insane. You see how many steps are in what we need to do? Like. All we wanted to do was get our ore system set up, get the node set up, and get everything transferring over. But we need a network receiver for that. And for the network receiver, we need Enderman. And sure, I could go hunt for Enderman at night or whatever, but like I said, I'm trying to be efficient and we want to use things that are at our disposal. Oh, look at this. It's a purple boy here. Let's grab some of this and let's outplay this bad boy. Let's build this here let's build this here let's build this Ooh. we'll build this so then we can get this guy to walk in here hey you come over here ah! <laughs> you son of a bitch I can't even get you down there man ah we got screwed Oh, here's a ghast. All right, we got a ghast here and some gunpowder. Nice. Didn't I find a nether fortress last time? I'm pretty sure I found another fortress last time. Let's land, because I'm just draining power here. Didn't I find another fortress? I'm pretty sure I found a blaze spawner last time. Or is that in that underground area? Hmm. That might have been in the underground area. Well, let's go ahead and explore this way, I guess, and see if we find another fortress. Oh, a magma cube. Take that. Thank you. And yeah, we'll turn off hover so we can save some uh, jetpack fuel. We'll just be skipping around like this. We. Thank you. Oh, look. Oh, there's blazes. I see them. Okay, let's go ahead and name this place. We'll name another fortress. We'll make it Ultra Red because they play dangerous. Hey, you. You didn't give me anything? Really, nothing. Okay. Well, that's unlucky, isn't it? Is there a blaze spawner over here? There is. Ouch, you still got me. You guys dropped it. Oh, and you dropped. So they dropped this uh, spell book that is from Iron Spells and Spellbooks. That's cool. We haven't really messed with it. Oh my goodness. We just got a flawless gem. This is the second to highest level, and they are super expensive and rare. That's 65% lifesteal. And if we put it on, an, on a heavy weapon, weapon, which is an axe, we gain plus 45% attack damage. 
but we lose minus 45% max health. If we put it on our chest plate, though, we get plus 40% healing. Ranged weapons, when you fire, you lose 40% max health and deal 220% damage. Damn. Shields. Blocking an attack heals you for 55% of the damage. That's pretty crazy stuff on that gem there. That's nuts. Kill 10 blazes. Is this that cool? Oh, it is that cool part of the fortress. There's a ton of loot here. Uh, we can find s quite some awesome gear in these barrels, actually. Okay, there's some gloves. Greens. We got some green items. These have plus, 30, plus 0.35 attack damage. These had plus 0.25. Okay, blue pants. Or blue gold pants, but still blue. A purple sword. We just made a sword, man. <laughs> Protection pierce. Ooh, damn. Well, if we mark this, then when we come here later, after we get all the modium, we can just mine the vibranium. I'm going to make that that color because that's vibranium color. Let's check this. Green. Ooh. Get outplayed. Another purple sword. This one's hurt as shit, though. Usually you don't find them with like much durability gone. Some flint and coal, gunpowder coal, another gem, some green pants to break down, a gem, a blue chest plate to break down. Now you would you would think that we're getting insane luck right now, but actually we're not. We're actually quite unlucky. I've found so many purple items here and we are not finding it. We've only found two. Usually you get like three or four. I'm not even joking. Gem of the samurai, that's gonna be really good to put on a sword. A blue helmet, a sharpness two sword. We can pull the sharpness two off of that. Well, that was quite eventful. Interesting. This is like a wither monument thing. Yeah, it is. Nice. And this is from Create. Ooh. Create doors. That is awesome, man. And you know what? I'm going to take this. Give me all of your create stuff. This is going to save me quite a bit of time later. So you give me this. Give me this. What's over here? You're powered by lava. Interesting. What's over here? Anything else? Awesome. More create stuff. Yep. Give me this. All of it. All of the create stuff. Oh, yeah. We got sequence gear shifts, speedometer, hand cranks, and encased chain drives, and a site casings. Now, Create is a very complex mod, but it is also super fun. It is very taxing on your performance, though. But I've got a beast of a PC, so I'm going to be messing with that later for sure. I am super excited to do that, actually. It's going to be fun. Okay. What is this here? Blocks of coal. Ouch. That dude just sniped my ass. Damn. It's in here. A whole bunch of gobbledygook night vision goggles okay so we can take that bat backpack off but if we keep it on then we can keep the bonuses from the bat backpack and then we can also put on a different headgear we got options baby we got options that's what i like to see baby that's what i like to see okay so we got some blaze rods that is very very nice oh this is a piglin tower right <laughs> All of you die. You guys have loot in here? A green onion crate. Uh, sure, I'll take that. Spawner agitator. That'll be nice. A gem. Dark steel. Gravity well. That's a mage book. Green pants. Green sword. Green shovel. Ooh, that'll increase our max HP by 10. Got some ink for spells. Walden spikes. It's quite a bit of uh, actually decent stuff in here. That's cool. Let me take this. I need to wear a belt. Beautiful. Got some extra max HP, baby. Uh, bottles of enchanting. I think I need those for crafting as well. What is this? 
The Soul Forge. Oh, this is where a boss is. Um, I don't know if I'm ready for this guy. Let's make a uh, tag for it. You guys ready for this? Because I know I'm not. Oh man, the netherite monstrosity. <laughs> he can like one tap us if I get caught. This is how you play all the mods nine, baby, right here. Thing is, we aren't even super strong right now. Oh, we just have flight. Ooh, he looks so cool though, huh? 300 health, dude. The mod authors are probably like, bro, this guy. <laughs> he's cheesing the shit out of our boss. I'll admit, he's fucking cool, and so is the music. Super, super dope. Oh! He almost got us there. Don't get impatient. We did it! We totally didn't cheese it. <laughs> that was funny. <gasps> I didn't know he dropped a cool-ass hammer. Yo. What is that? When in your main hand, right click at a block to cause AOE damage. FYI, this is a pickaxe. What tier of pickaxe is it? Oh, yo. It's got un unlimited durability. What? And then I can do AOE. Oh, I just smash the ground. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, shit. Yo, this thing's dope. This is what happens when you play, uh... Modded Minecraft, man. So much shit's going on. <laughs> That's insane, bro. Holy shit. Monstrous horn. What does this do? Oh, I can add it to a helmet. If you fall below half health, knock back nearby entities and increases defense. Oh, sick. I can put that on another right helmet. Okay. Well, we are in iron. <laughs> we are in iron gear. That is still so dope, though. That is sick, man. Dude. Dude. Cool. This place is awesome. That was really awesome. Oh, shit. I didn't expect that. Man, look at this. This is what I need to start doing when I build stuff. It's like this tiered system here. Because this looks really neat. Actually, looks really cool the way they built that. We could say that that was awesome. I think we can all agree that was pretty freaking cool to see and be a part of. Came here for blazes. Found the soul forge. Very nice. That boss is from a mod called the Cataclysm mod, I believe. Yep, Cataclysm mod. I have only found one boss. Um, that is the only boss that I've ever found, but I know there are plenty more, and I'm super excited to try them out. Now, if you've been looking at my jetpack fuel, and you've been wondering, oh no, is he going to forget about that? No, I'm not. <laughs> I was watching that the whole time, because that was the time we were going to go home. Well, we got quite a bit of stuff oh we don't even have enough space in our storage system okay let's take a look at some of the loot we got here that's a green that's a purple we're gonna take out that's another purple two more greens another green and another green all right so now we can just do broop, broop. And salvage. We got the least amount of arcane sands we could get. That is super unfortunate. And here, boom, 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 boom. Bam. Oh, pfft. got screwed over again. Let's see if I can do this. I can't enchant this? Aw, oh, you're kidding. Oh, well, can I? I can! Yo, is this going to be our main weapon now? If we can get some attack speed on this bad boy... That'd be sick. Oh, that'd be so cool. Ah, it's because our reforger is not high enough level. So let's just take that. Ah, oh, crap. Um, this, and where's our reforger? I cannot see it. 
now. Upgrade. Boom. Boom. I believe we're going to need more than just one. Yeah, we need at least uh, two. But then... Ooh, okay, so this is... It's going to get pickaxe enchantments, of course. So it's not going to actually get much damage. What can this mine, actually? It can mine ancient debris. So... What tier is it? It says it has 2,031 durability. Um, let's see what happens if I break a block. 2,031. That's what if happens if I break a bunch of blocks. 2,031. Okay. It's... Uh, oops. No, go back home. Quick. We're almost out of jetpack fuel. I do think if I got hit by that, uh, the forge boss, he probably would have two-tapped me. I really do think so. Oh, hello. Come here, come here, quick. Thank you. Now, die. Two pearls, a ender tier. Which, what is this used for? Is this all it's used for? Ah, it's used just in the blood infuser. Okay. Well, I don't care about that. Two ender pearls, and we got an ender pearl fragment. Which I believe we have enough enough fragments to turn that into another one. Another ender pearl, that is. And then boom, 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 boom. Can we make this now? We still need amethyst, duh! And the eye of ender. Damn it. I'm so we're so broke. We don't got no damn ender pearls, man. Shit. Did you already process everything? <gasps> you processed everything? Look at you. Now process this. That thing is so cool, man. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, put that stuff in there. I think we got... Oh, we're out of space in here. Huh. Um, well, let's check this. Ooh, we got some stuff and things. We got some stuff and things, guys. And turn this down into that and into that. I wonder if there's a quick way to find amethyst. Okay, so we can maybe make this dowsing rod from Ars Nouveau. That's a mod that I really, or Ar Nouveau. We can, I really want to get into this mod at some point anyway. But maybe this can help us with what we want to figure out right now. Um, what the hell? Did it just break? Okay. Maybe we go into our mine and see if it'll help us. Man, now that we have enderpearls, these guys are spawning everywhere. Magical creatures. Amethyst. Anywhere. Anywhere, amethyst. Hello. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Look, right there. Is that amethyst? Please be Amethyst. Come on. <gasps> we found Amethyst! Oh, baby! Okay, so we have learned something today. We have all learned something together. If you make this dowsing rod, you can find Amethyst. Let's, let's break in here. And let's just break all of the Amethyst clusters. We can get a ton with our fortune. Oh, yes. We want to keep the budding ones alive. Oh man, it spawned in the middle of a spawner. If I break a budding amethyst, does it just turn into regular amethyst? Oh, it just breaks completely. Oh, okay. I wonder if then I could use, ooh, some source gems, that'll be helpful. I wonder then if we can use a cardboard box on that and, ooh, a drag me shard. Okay, let me, let me stay on topic. I wonder if it'll allow us to use the cardboard box to grab it. And then after we use the cardboard box, then what we can do is place it down and then we can have some sort of system to allow them to get automatically harvested. I don't wanna break, I don't wanna break the budding ones. I'll break the rest because I don't think they grow. So I'll break the rest of those, but I wanna leave the budding ones alone. Yeah, it looks like only the uh, budding ones grow, and, uh, those shards, so that is okay with me. But man, we just found so much amethyst! Look at this! So cool! 
Okay, so let's mark this down here. Budding amethyst. We'll mark this as the purplish color. All right, sweet. So we'll come back down here at some point and we will grab the budding amethyst here and we'll move it up so we can farm it. All right, that is so cool though. We got some freaking amethyst. Awesome. Okay, we have that now. We got some more ender pearls. So now let's do what I wanted to do this whole time and make an ender gate. Oh, yes. We can place this down. And now here come the endermen. They're going to kick our ass. Look at that. Rewards. Look at all those rewards. Thank goodness we have this splash damage. Look at all these rewards. This is so cool. If you haven't used these portals before, you can do them with every hostile mob just about. So try them. Boom, 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 boom. We have one more wave still, and look how much loot we've gotten. Holy cow. And on the last kill, we'll get 100 rolls of their loot table. Oh, no. We needed to eat. <gasps> oh, God. He's on fire. I thought he was a legendary boss for a second. Thankfully, he was not. He's trying to be, he trying to be slick with it, but that's my name. Ooh, look at all that. And I just picked up half of it, too. Oh, man, that's so good. Look at all these ender pearls. Look at all those ender pearls. Oh, yes, we did it. We got ender pearls, baby. You know what all those ender pearls mean? <laughs> network receivers. We can have a network now. Oh, baby. It has been literally three hours, 58 minutes, and 47 seconds of this entire play session getting to this point. It is such a grind, man. It's such a grind, but it's a good one. It's a fun one. Oh, we just did that. Can we make it? Is there a slime gate? Slime gateway is cheap. Very, very cheap. We need a mushroom. We need a brown mushroom, and we need three bottles of water. Hey, yo, frog, you seen any brown mushrooms? He ain't seen them. Damn it. Shit. There's mushrooms over here. There's red mushrooms over here. They're brown ones. There they are. There we are. Come on. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Where's my axe? Hey! Hey! Watch your jet, bro. Ah, here we are. Brown mushrooms. Nice. Okay, so now we can go back home. Oh, two minute cooldown because we put that on ourselves. All right. Where is home? Over yonder. You can turn those off as well. You can turn off waypoints uh, with Z so you don't see them. You can toggle that. Glass bottles. Make three glass bottles. Put the mob swap away. We don't. Oh, we can't because we don't have space. Duh. So let's make those. Oh, bro. Oh, we need ender pearls. Don't worry, bro. We got we got ender pearls, dog. <laughs> We've got ender pearls. Oh. What just happened? You were trying to put it away. Got it. Okay. It was trying to put it back into our system, but we didn't have any room left. So let's go ahead and spawn this slime gate. And the crazy thing is, you don't even need slime for this to begin. You can just do this with the mushrooms and the bottles of water. So that's really cool. Ooh, acidic slimes. I don't know what that means. Probably means if you touch me, you're gonna hurt a lot. Oh man, this splash damage is actually so nice. Oh yeah, 230 slime and 16 slime pearls. I meant slime pearls, not slime charms. Oh shit. That is mama slime right there. Damn, dude, that was awesome. That's so much slime. Look at that. Oh, yes. That is so cool. That's so sick. We need storage upgrades. We need storage parts. So nine would give us three 4Ks, which three 4Ks would give us a 16. We want more than that, though. Enriched quartz iron. Nine. And now we need... 
nine more. Okay. This will give us a 64K when we're done. See how many we can make. Okay, so we almost made all of them. We just need some more basic processors. That's 12, and that should be enough for that. Oh, look at all that redstone and coal we cooked up while we were gone. Man, I love chunk, I love chunk loading stuff, and I love making machines that are doing the good stuff. Okay, now we're gonna need, I believe, yep, improved processors. And we're going to need 12 of these. What did we run out of there? Ah, these. Okay, boom. Now I think we need the yep, advanced processors, and it looks like we need three. So let's make three. Now we got the 64K, baby. And we can turn it into a 64K storage disk. Oh, yes. And then we just plot that bad boy right in there. Now we can hold 80,000 items. Let's grab our importer, drop that on there. Grab the speed and stack upgrade. Drop those in there and watch this baby fly. Gosh, look at all that beautiful loot. Look at all that amethyst. All of this stuff, man. It's so good. That was awesome. That was so sick. We, oh man, with these gates, dude, these gates, we, we learned about something that is really, really, really cool. I'm so glad that we checked on those gates. Those things are sick. You guys need to keep an eye on those. I mean, look how cheap, look how cheap this slime gateway is. And we gained hundreds of slime balls for this cheap recipe. As long as you can kill them all, pfft, easy peasy, easy slime. Okay, let's, let's get to what we were originally planning to do. Let's grab this ancient debris. We're gonna throw it into the middle of our smelting factory here because it can't go through the whole thing, but at least it can go into the crusher. So instead of getting just one um, netherite scrap, we'll get three per. Now if we take some gold, scrap, take these. Okay, so for enriched gold, we need some gold dust, but then we can make enriched gold. So let's just... Do this, make two enriched gold here, and cook these up. It's way cheaper, way freaking cheaper. Look at that, netherite ingots. Look at that whole system working. Perfect, we got three netherite ingots, and we're gonna need them for our network receiver and our network transmitter. Drop this in here, all right. Now we can make our network receiver and our network transmitter. And let's see what we get from these. Okay, we got machine casing, improved processor, and a network card, so we don't even have to make a network card. Now we need an exporter, and we're gonna need an importer, which we're gonna need some more basic processors. And we're actually gonna wanna upgrade this exporter to an elite exporter. Drop those in there, make another exporter. All right, sweet. Now let's upgrade this bad boy to an elite importer, which means we're gonna need one more of these. Now let's upgrade this to an elite exporter. Sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so, network transmitter. What does this do? It transmits our network anywhere that we would like. So I'm gonna place this right here. Then you take the network card on the receiver, right click it, go back to your transmitter, drop the network card in, and now it's telling you that it's linked to a receiver that is 102 blocks away. Now. These do use power, as you can see, but hey man, who cares? They don't use much. Now we have our network so far away. We can access our network from so far away with that. Go ahead and drop this in there. I need some more power on my jetpack. Now, I didn't forget about that bad boy over there, the starts of our mob farm. We're definitely gonna work on that. But right now, we have more important things to do because we solved the problem that we initially started building that for. Um, with a method that I actually didn't really expect which was were these gates and they were way better than i expected so hell yeah thank you gateways to eternity mod you are amazing thank you for that mod you are awesome all right now let's grab these items from laser io and let it get or we'll do it just so it's a bit easier to follow along i'll go ahead and move this to right here oh boss spawned right next to my shit How much did that do? Oh, quite a bit of health, huh? 
Get out of here. This is my zone. Gosh, you got arrows into everything, man. That's a nasty. Oh my goodness, dude. Please leave me alone. Thank you. Okay, so let's set up an exporter here. Now we want to set iron, copper, nickel, silver, and let's just do raw. So we know aluminum can go through here. We know platinum can go through here. Tin, zinc. I also saw uranium, I think. Osmium. Uh, these will also eventually go through here. So we'll drag those in there as well. Lead. Now this is why I got the Elite Exporter because it allows you, it gives you another row of items that you can allow to export. So look at this, it's already dropping everything in here. Beautiful. Okay, so now let's talk about laser nodes, shall we? So we're gonna put our laser nodes down here. We don't get walked up on by the plug. Whoa, a gold boss just spawned, what? This is rare as hell. Okay, we're gonna have to play this super safe because I'm pretty sure that guy can one-shot us, but he's not using his bow. So we're just gonna play around our AOE damage real quick. Okay, that's not gonna that's not doing as much as I thought it would. Yeah, so typically, typically in all the mods 9, the only mobs that can spawn in the overworld are greens and blues. So I've never, I played for days and days with my friends and I didn't see a single gold boss. So I don't know, I don't know the exact odds, but I can tell you it has to be super rare. Oh, let's go. What'd you drop? What'd you drop? <laughs> a gold leather helmet. Of course, it's a leather helmet. That's still a gold item. Look at that. It's got armor, luck, max health, magic power, mana. Two slots for sockets. We take reduced magic damage. It ignores durability damage by 32%. And it inflicts blindness. Oh my goodness. We need to lay down big torches here. Anyway, that's cool and all. But I'm probably going to break that down. Um, it's just going to break too fast. It only has 55 durability. If I put it on, it's just going to break. Still, that is cool. We got a... Uh, that's nuts, man. We got a gold boss. That's crazy. Actually, like, actually insane. Okay. Let's talk about laser nodes before Oliver showed up. <laughs> the first thing that you need to do with these laser nodes is you right click into the laser node here and then you want to select the side of the laser node that the inventory that you want to mess with is on. You want to install an item card there and then you should see, oh my goodness with shader is so bad. So you should see a laser pointing to the inventory that you put the item card in. So what you can do from here is if you right click on the item card it will start off in this insert mode here. What we actually wanna do with this item card is change it to extract, change it to be exact, and we want to change this transfer amount from one to three, and you can left click this number to increase it, or you can right click to decrease. So change this to three. So on here, we want this to point to this barrel, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click this and we're gonna say insert. So this one will take items out of here and it's going to insert them into here. And as you'll see, it only transferred items that add up to three. So this, if you set this to exact and you set it to three, it will only transfer items when there are at least three of them. It will never send them when there's not three. If you don't have it set to exact, it's not gonna do that and it's gonna mess things up. And then your system up here is going to get clogged and then you're going to have to come over here over and over and manually fix this and manually pull out items. But this was what we were trying to get the entire time. We weren't really hung up on the laser nodes. I built those early on. They're super cheap to build. This was what we got hung up on right here, the network receiver, just because of ender pearls. And it took so long because I was trying to be super efficient and get things done. So we had a ton of the resources. I mean, as you guys saw, I was working on that mob farm over there. Uh, I still plan to use that, but I mean, hey, it forced us to upgrade this melon power. So we're gonna have a ton of power now, but at least we've got things done. This is gonna be so awesome. We have this set up to output all of the ore that can go through our system. Now you can put an overclocker in here. And what the overclocker will do is it'll make the node run even faster, which is really, really cool. And we can also do the same thing over here. 
So let's go ahead and do this. And now our system is cooking again. We'll go ahead and throw in the improved pipe upgrade. But this system now should never get clogged up with some ore just sitting in here, not being able to push out. Because if you remember, the chemical injection chamber needs three raw ore in order to process. It can't take one, it can't take two, it needs to take three exactly. So setting up these laser nodes here is going to save us a bunch of headache. Now I had to turn my shaders off because as you can see, these lasers are super bright, but I have them on again because I mean, it just looks so much nicer. I mean, look at this, see this? If I turn the shaders off, come on, man. Yeah, I get 200 FPS if I don't have them on, but it just looks so nice. Why wouldn't I have them on, right? You guys got to experience 100% of the modded Minecraft feel today. We were all over the place, but we got a ton of stuff done, and that's what really makes me the most happy. We got a ton of crap done. We did a ton of setting up things for the future. I mean, we set that little thing over there, and I'm going to be pumping spawners into that. It's going to be really nice. I actually used the framed blocks here for the first time. I set up some slabs and I wanted to use the same texture as this here, the runic carved deep slate. So I set these up uh, on the inside and the outside. The reason I did this is because mobs can't spawn on slabs. So I place slabs around in order to avoid the stat that's on here, which is the spawn range, because I didn't have the items at the time to reduce that. That is how we were avoiding that. Now, later on, I'm gonna put a mob fan in here. We're gonna have them blowing over here, and then I'll have one above, we'll have them blowing down. And then we'll put some vector plates in here to push all of the mobs towards this mob masher here. We'll set up a vacuum hopper just to focus on getting XP, and we will have this focus on collecting the items with the magnet upgrade. So that's something to look forward to right there. Look forward to that, that's gonna be really fun to build. But man, oh man, these ore will just output whenever I put them into our system and they're not gonna get clogged up in here. This is gonna be so awesome. What's really awesome now, though, is that we can set up an importer. These guys are just gonna eat my ass, huh? I need to go to sleep, Jesus, man. As I was saying, we can set this over here, this importer, to automatically input into our network receiver. But first, we need to grab some cables because I forgot to bring them. We set this up here, and now these are automatically getting put into our network. And the whole squad is here to kill me again. Good lord. Look at this, though. Isn't this sick? Man, things are going to get output into here, and they're just going to go into the network. It's going to be so cool. I'm sure there's plenty of other ways to do this. There's plenty of other ways to get this kind of system done, but this is what I did, and... I hope you learned something. I hope that this episode was informative enough. I hope that I was explaining what I was doing well enough for you guys to understand things. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate each and every one of you, especially when you guys leave comments and feedback for me. It helps me out a lot. I'm completely new to this thing. I haven't done any big series before. All I've really ever uploaded was just clips and highlights of things. So thank you so much for giving my videos a watch. I really do appreciate it, and I look forward to continuing to expand our world and learning new mods with you guys. I hope all of you guys take care, and I'll see you guys next time.